Three away. Oh, two away. Talking two away. Oh, oh. It keeps going up and down. Hey Greg, this is for you, buddy. And you too, Hanson. You're a man. That's a huge accomplishment considering none of us are 18 years old. Old people can actually be dope. This is just the beginning. People are going to subscribe to Aquascape and find how to live the Aquascape lifestyle for years. And Pond's done right, customer serve right, which is the entire goal of the channel. So, fantastic job. This is super proud of everybody. Sure is an exciting time to be an Aquascape. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Great job. Super proud. Okay. Bye. Bye. Nice job, team. Oh, we're back yeah. down. Let's celebrate again. Good morning, Nick. Oh, hey, Brian. How are you? <laughs> the rest of the crew here. We're starting a cool project. Starting a really cool project. Uh, a whole lot different than our typical project. Uh, we've got this kind of like mid-century modern house. You know, one of my favorite styles. I actually really like the house. Told them if they were ever thinking of selling to give me a call. Not that I would leave my pond, but it is a super cool house. We've got some of our stuff already here from Illinois Brick. We got some really massive stone steps. I didn't get to see these things before they came out. I love the size of them, but they're going to be challenging challenging to move but it'll definitely add an element to the water feature. Sold this uh, about a year ago, and uh, I've always wondered like what happened, and so they called back up and said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And so here we are at the property, and we're gonna get ready to do this. Now this feature's probably around 75 years old. That's what they're guessing. Whoa! So here's the challenge. Um, it's actually kind of a cool design, right? So you got this big slope that comes down like this. They took advantage of the slope, just like we would with waterfalls, facing towards the house now those are basement windows and it's a really cool finished basement and so you can just imagine how great that would look from sitting down in there and then we've got a porch over here family room over there kitchen right there and so everything is facing towards that the biggest problem one it doesn't work it leaks like a sieve from my understanding there's a pipe that sits someplace in here and they just drilled a bunch of holes in the pipe with the idea that water would come out evenly and of course that doesn't work we need water to kind of swell up in areas before it comes over the other big problem they have any type of major rainfall this gets really high and where do you think it goes right into that window and so about three to six times a year they said up to six times a year they'll get flooding in their basement all because of the pond so we are going to turn this into a pondless waterfall with an external sump pit that'll actually capture that water and if the water level gets higher in the sump pit we can actually push it and discharge it that way we're gonna have some stone steps that come down from there more for maintenance than anything else and we'll get going so our first thing on any type of rehab project is demo, demo, demo. So we gotta tear all of this rock apart so we can come in and build a new waterfall. Uh, wait till you see what we do. It's gonna be a fun process. First things first, we are uh, playing around down here. Hey, Nick? Just a little bit. Yeah? This reminds me of my days cleaning porta potties. You used to do that? No. Oh. oh, but this is what I imagine it'd be like. I was going to say, you haven't come very far since then. So, we got the first step is just to get all this slop out from the bottom, get it as, as dry as we possibly can, and then we're going to start working our way, demoing all this flagstone. At some point, a couple of us will break off and start setting stone steps that are going to come down in through there while the rest of the demo is happening. We've got a uh, little bit of muck and debris down in the bottom, nothing too crazy. So we are going to slap it into buckets, slap it into wheelbarrows, and then get these out to the truck. Yeah. Slapping. Schleppy, schleppy. You can see Matt's got his ass kicking shades on today. So he's ready to roll. Um, we've got the other Matt, Juan and Corey out here today in combination with Nick and myself. So we are going to make incredible progress today. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> It actually smells like something died, but I don't think it is. I don't know where it came from, but it was in, it was in a garbage can down underneath the shrub over there. Oh, Got that's it. Instant gag. <laughs> that was instant I, gag. I can't believe nobody threw it. Let's show. Let's show the people at home. That's 
That's whatever was in that garbage can. I love my job! <laughs> So as you can see, we have all of the flagstone now currently out. You can see it's a very, it's a very time period specific. Let's just put it that way. So you can see that they've got the concrete pond. You've got the overflow that's built into it. This was something that happened, I guess, more often than we tend to think of, you know, nowadays. This feature is anywhere from 60 to 75 years old, and it's very, very common construction practices. But you can see why they stopped doing that, especially in our area with the frost, uh, or excuse me, the, the freezing temperatures in the wintertime, you get a lot of these cracks, um, heaving and thawing of the soil. I'm sure it looked really, really nice back in the day. However, it just doesn't cut the mustard over the long term. So I'm going to cut this overflow pipe out of here and get it as close to the concrete as we can. We are going to leave the existing concrete, throw a bunch of heavy duty fabric, underneath the liner and on top of the liner, then throw our aqua blocks in to maintain water volume or that water uh, storage and uh, and then backfill with gravel inside the liner to lock all the aqua blocks in place, which is not, it's not that we don't do it that way. It's just, uh, it's not a common practice, but for this application, it's gonna be the right technique and make it bomb proof. And so the guys are gonna finish up just the last few pieces of flagstone there. You can see we have a sump pit that we are going to have inside the liner that has the sump pump, everything floats already built in inside. That's going to sit inside and we're going to rock around it and disguise it with rock work. On the back side, kind of actually where the sump is sitting, there's the old skimmer box there that's going to be gone. We'll fill that hole with soil, make that a plant pocket, but there will be stone steps going back up that way. So we'll get that cut out, fabric liner fabric, aqua box, gravel, and then we will start with our weepy wall. It is about 3 p.m. on day one of this project. You can see the boys have already started creating that weepy wall, recreating that weepy wall. So just to kind of give you some insight as to what we're doing, they are laying these pieces of flagstone down as you can see what Juan just did, and they're trying to match the joints up, but alternate them as they go throughout the course. Now they're getting this kind of serpentine look. It's a very organic process, very free flowing. What they are doing is using pea gravel, which is a very fine stone to help level out these flagstone pieces, and they are foaming it, as you can see, down in between, so that we can get water to run over all of these rocks, not just um, over one, and then the water gets lost down in between. Nick and I are continuing on these stone steps. We have to over-excavate out for this next piece. That thing is about six feet long. As you can see, it's gonna match up to this corner and kind of come back this way. One thing that we like to do with steps is really change the direction of the riser and kind of alternate and kind of spin them on these 45 degree angles so it doesn't look like a concentric staircase going back up. Next, doing a little machine maintenance while I am over here yakking at you guys. But again, three o'clock p.m. today, day one. We got the entire reno done, the basin's in. We've already started on the waterfall. We should hammer out these steps today. We're gonna to be in great shape for tomorrow to continue to rock and roll on this stuff back behind me. So really, really good progress. Super pumped right now. Well, that is a wrap for day one of this pond list waterfall rehab project. We set the steps behind me. We are done. We just have to fill in this area with some soil, maybe a boulder uh, to retain some of that. As you can see behind me, and there we go. They've already started on that weepy wall. Let me turn the camera around and just kind of give you a nice little shot of those stone steps. Now that'll all be filled with dirt. It'll all slide down in here and then we're gonna continue this stack slate look all the way up and through there. So that'll help retain all of that soil down and through there. And then this will all be that stack slate wall. 
with the weepy water walls. So tomorrow, we're really gonna focus on the shape, some of these pooling areas where the water is going to start dribbling down and about. Got a really cool way we're gonna do that. And we gotta button all this up over here. There's our pump vault. Here's our sump pit. I think we're gonna revisit that tomorrow and probably drop that down a little bit or figure out a way to disguise that a little bit better. So that is that and that is that. All right, so we got Nicholas lacing up the uh, the big boy boots today. You ready to get after it? Uh, I'm ready to get after it. This is some of the more technical kind of rock work that we do. Piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. And not that our big ponds aren't, but this is much more matching up joints, matching up angles. With that being said, we have quite a bit of work ahead of us today. So I'm gonna get going on this. Yeah, so like Nick said, it's a little bit more technical. It's I think it's more organic than anything. We're just kind of winging it. Get these nice sweeping flowing curves. We brought out a couple of our stacked slate elements as well as a patio pond. And we're gonna see if uh, maybe the customer wouldn't be open to the idea of incorporating some of this stuff into this, uh, this water feature. This is how far we made it today. What do you think? Hmm? I'm happy with what we did. Everybody got their hand at uh, Stack and Slate today, and everybody did, in my opinion, a very, very, very good job. We were also able to convince the customers that uh, the stack slate sphere was a good idea. So we cut off um, the little lip on top of the second piece there. So that's going to be an upflow kind of fountainscape feature. The top half we used to cover up our sump pump vault. See how the stack slate on the sphere ties in or carries in with the stack slate of the feature. There are two diffusers, one right up there just beyond that top course of slate and then there's another one right over in through here. These are just some channel drains that uh, we picked up at our local hardware store. I think it was Home Depot um, or Lowe's or something but we are going to push water through a two inch line to this one as well as to that one at different levels and we're doing big bib liners over and underneath these to get water to upflow and then trickle out kind of a weepy wall kind of look over here. So the only actual I guess fountain-esque element would be that bowl right there and we've got that thing plumbed up through the middle. The reason we chose to do the gravel in the top and have only a few inches of water in the top of that so to give them the option to plant that with aquatic plants in through there. But that water is just going to chug up and churn over all 360 degrees of that. It's going to be a really, really neat effect. You can see the curves in this stack slate all in through here. Again, that kind of serpentine shape. We're tying walls together. This will end up getting filled in with some slate as well as some dirt. Nice big plant pocket back behind there. And then there will be another one between these two spillways. So that'll kind of curve in really hard and then it's gonna dive back into that hillside, creating again that serpentine kind of shape along the back, also allowing room for plants to get right up in close to this feature. So really excited to see this thing up and running tomorrow. Guys made great progress. We put a hell of a big dent in that pile of slate that was over there. And we've checked a lot of things off the list, including um, the overflow pipe that goes from the sump pump is now connected all the way on the other side of the house into a four inch drain tile that goes out to the street. Tomorrow will be the finishing touches, buttoning up the rest of this wall, but um, stay tuned, it is going to look incredible. You can see Micho is wrapping up the hose. That means it's a wrap. Quite the departure from what we normally do, the stack slate and all that good stuff. Um, but water is flowing. You can see the sphere that we cut in half is really, really nice. I love the serpentine shapes, all these little landing areas. Like I said, it's, it's a very strong departure from what we normally do. 
The stone steps turned out great. We ended up pulling the sump pump out of inside the liner and putting it right here in this little area. The customer was concerned about the height of it and I agreed. So we sunk it down and we ran a four inch pipe and bulkhead it through the liner there. Uh, so there's a four inch intake that sits about three inches below the top of our lowest part of liner along this edge so that they never run the risk of taking water on in their basement anymore. So it just turned out really, really cool.